This video is part of a course on food physics of which this belongs to the applications section. It is the second of a four part series on puffing, in particular rice puffing. So the video will give an idea of the detailed uh, spatial and time variations uh, of temperature, moisture, etc. inside the rice grain during puffing and um, it, the following video the next video would be looking at how product and process factors affect this puffing process so we now go through the changes with position and time of the many variables during a puffing process with rice puffing as the example. So the process of course starts with heating and uh, here we see clips at different times. So you can see uh, the times here at different times uh, for temperature in a cross section of this rice grain. So if I take a section of this that's what is shown here and um, th so the corner heats from multiple directions so the corner heats from multiple directions and therefore heats more uh, with time of course you can expect the temperatures to increase at higher temperature uh, there's more evaporation so let's see how so evaporation is kind of uh, trying uh, the, the vapor amount in a pore trying to come to equilibrium uh, vapor amount for that moisture and temperature level given by this at higher temperature this amount increases because the vapor pressure increases at a higher temperature so the, so the vapor would also try to kind of catch up with the equilibrium vapor pressure. So with more vapor forming, the pressure increases as, as so you can see higher, higher temperatures were here. So there's more evaporation. And so that increases the pressure. And here you can see this is the gauge pressure and you can see the higher uh, pressures at about uh, six seconds. However, at higher pressure, a moisture is pushed out faster. So moisture uh, it is pushed out faster. So the moisture reduces as shown in this figure here. Again, a bunch of clips of liquid water saturation which is kind of uh, you can it's similar to talking about the moisture content uh, and so so that decreases uh, if there's less liquid water remaining like here if there's less then there is less evaporation and then the pressure now drops so you can now see that there is less evaporation and and the pressure drops as you can see here the pressure drops another interesting part you see evaporation uh, is basically happening even though we allowed it to happen everywhere but it ends up happening in a zone like you see here it's it's almost like one of these sharp boundary problems so that's where evaporation happens resembling a frontal interface that is also where the glassy rubbery transition happens that interface is where the glassy rubbery transition happens. 
Um, so now at higher temperature, the material also gets rubbery and soft. This also we could have shown, but I am not showing here. It's already quite complex. And, and so when the pressure increases here, like here, when the pressure increases, uh, it allows the shape to deform because by now with the increased temperature, the material has become soft. And so the higher pressure makes that soft material expand. The finally, you know, the already puffed outer region, um, like th this one here, is mostly gas, uh, meaning it's, uh, it's lost most of the liquid water and therefore it's lower thermal conductivity. So the rate of heat transfer inside reduces with time and that reduces the peak evaporation rate. You notice the peak evaporation rate here is a lot lower uh, than the peak evaporation rate, let's say here. So the evaporation also reduces. So this expanded material here, which is now dry and therefore glassy, and so it kind of stays there. And this is the part that we're going to discuss in little more details in the next slide. Here are some additional details about the material change that is critical to the puffing process. Uh, please look up glass transition, the phenomena of glass transition, if you are not familiar with it. So during the process, the temperature uh, and moisture changes, of course. And the, for the moisture, it of course dries out, so it only goes down. For temperature, um, it increases first as we are heating and then of course it reduces as we are cooling down at the end. On the left is a property diagram, mechanical property and how it changes with temperature or moisture. So to start with, the temperature is of course low, so we are here um, even though it has higher moisture because of the low temperature, it is what's called glassy, meaning it's very dry and, and hard. So that's my initial state. And then we heat it up. So we heat up uh, and the material eventually, the rice material eventually uh, melts and it becomes uh, like a liquid and simultaneously is it, it is losing moisture so at some point it is still low Young's modulus it's kind of a rubbery and a, a softer uh, solid and now if we go this way because here in the moisture in the process, the moisture keeps going down. So as the moisture keeps going down, it becomes closer and closer to the glassy state. So it moves this way. Um, so it's Young's modulus increases. Um, and as the moisture is kind of a real low, there's no more moisture to evaporate, we stop the puffing process, it is cool. So now we are into this glassy hard state. But by then, because of the pressures that are generated when it was soft, it has been puffing. So it has now increased in size. Increased in size, but now it's dried and cooled, so it's glassy, it's hard. So this 
increased size that is hard it kind of stays there so it's permanently changed in a size that's the puffing process so we talked about temperature moisture and deformation deformation leads to increase in porosity now gas porosity like it's shown in this top figure uh, of rice grains at different times experimentally uh, it's showing the porous structure this porosity is an important quality attribute for example it makes the food crunchy so we want to have an idea of what is the porosity and what is the pore uh, size distribution or how is the spatial distribution of porosity um, so this experimental one uh, on the top the top figure is from a micro ct scan now the physics description that we have been talking about can also give us porosity because the physics description allows us to calculate the changed shape now we assume that the strict solid skeleton itself uh, the the volume of that is conserved meaning that itself does not change um, uh, change so the volume when it increases the rest of it is occupied by the gas so because we know the volume increase with time and at different locations we kind of know how the porosity develops so this bottom figure shows those computed porosity uh, first uh, spatial distribution so you see it is higher where uh, the the expansion has already happened and so the orange value is higher and then inside the blue is lower and it also shows how the porosity distribution changes with time and you can see it pretty much uh, follows the uh, the experimental results now of course it the the physics our physics cannot describe the exactly what is seen in the experimental results and there's a reason for it the way we describe the porous media it is locally averaged locally averaged not over the entire grain but locally averaged and so it will always show some sort of smooth transition from one location uh, to the other as you can see here as you can see the porosity change but it's not going to show individual pores this is not in the resolution of the physics that we discussed so again porosity starts at the tip where the heating and, and therefore the melting of the rice material and the pressure generation first occurs and therefore the expansion occurs first then it continues inward and with the the sides also joining and eventually the entire material now the total porosity in the uh, graph on the right we see porosity versus a uh, puffing time you notice you notice that there are two quantities total porosity and gas porosity now in the porous media way of looking at the physics total porosity is any volume occupied by other than the solid so this includes volume occupied by the gas but also if there is any liquid present volume occupied by that liquid so that's that's why the total porosity is slightly higher than the gas porosity so here we see 
that porosity of course increases with time but the process doesn't stop uh, or sorry doesn't start until about six seconds when the material has melted enough and there is enough evaporation inside to generate the pressure so the material has started to expand as mentioned earlier this porosity development with time porosity with puffing time and the final porosity is going to be of critical interest from a quality standpoint summarizing this video then first is it's a rapid process so you see the entire puffing process is over in 15 seconds as shown experimentally and the same kind we see from doing the physics description it's a rapid process you start with a rice grain and then you heat so it kind of uh, melts uh, the material goes really uh, soft from glassy to rubbery and simultaneously because of heating remember there was like 15 percent water uh, in the rice grain and it evaporates the internal water that develops internal pressure so internal pressure developed in a soft material causes uh, expansion of the soft material and then the uh, material is also drying simultaneously so the dried material hardens and fixes the final volume this is kind of a quick overview of the uh, physical processes in puffing